Hello and welcome to episode 88 of my Working with Todoist series. In this episode, I want to go through some of the changes that have been happening in Todoist over the last few weeks. Uh, we are now on version 847, which came out just a couple of days ago. That particular one wasn't a huge uh, update, but there have been some other updates, which particularly in 842, where we picked up uh, a few other quite significant updates. And one of them, which I showed you last week, was the uh, project viewing calendar, the project feeding calendar. But one of the other ones I didn't which what show you, which was the email. <clears throat> so we've completely updated our email to do is feature to make sure that emails and attachments appear beautifully organized in your task comments. And let's just have a look at what that means. So um, I have a, an email that I forwarded from, I believe it was Apple Mail. And if I click on that, uh, now in the past, what would have happened is this note would have contained the whole text of the email in basic text form. So it didn't look very nice. Uh, it was a bit disorganized. And if you wanted to reply to the email, you needed to head, you needed to go back into your email uh, and do it all manually. But now, since this update, what we can do is we get this little clickable box with the uh, envelope uh, icon here. And if you click on that, this will actually open up the original email. Now, it doesn't open up in your email program, but what it does do is it opens up the email that you actually um, have. So you can just click on that to reply, or you can, you know, for example, you can click on the uh, from here so I can click on that it'll take me straight back to my email program and I can hit reply from there but in this particular case this is uh, this is a cracking example because uh, this is a, a scarf that I have ordered and on here I can now click on that and it will take me directly to the uh, the website where I can track the uh, destination of my of this scarf so this is a re I really do like this uh, and I'm using it quite a lot um, because I'm finding it a lot more useful. Now, for those of you who are using Gmail web version, uh, you can just click on the link that's actually created and it'll take you directly into uh, Gmail, which is great. Uh, but I wasn't using Gmail and certainly uh, didn't use Gmail in that sense. So for me, uh, this now is making things a lot easier. So I really like that new feature. Another feature that... Um, that came up is recently I think it was in the same one um, they've tidied up can't find it now uh, but they've also tidied up the way that uh, the images are shown in so um, if I look here uh, I've now this is my new favorite lawyer from the uh, Brexit court case that was going on this week uh, I can click on that it will now open up uh, in another window and sure enough, so this is my favorite new, my new favorite lawyer, Lord Keen, um, who for me did a fantastic job in the recent Brexit hearing in London. Um, very stylish. Um, but one of the things that I, um, so I can actually click on that and it'll let me open it up in the website. So that's fine. But um, what I was particularly interested in was the scarf that he was wearing um, here, which is ultimately why I ordered the scarf that I found uh, at my favorite um, woolen shop, N. Peel. So again, I can click on here and it'll open up in another window. And if I do that, what it would mean I can do is then I can actually zoom in if I wish, uh, which is really, really useful. Okay, so they've tidied up the way that your images are going to be shown. And uh, that's a really nice little trick or, or nice little feature. So a lot of these new features really that are coming up in Todoist at the moment, uh, a lot of them are actually <clears throat> just tidying up issues. But obviously we've had some like the, the auto completer now displays more data and is much smarter in more cases. And that's a little bit more difficult to show you. But by playing with it, you, I'm sure you'll get a good idea of what it is. Now, finally, one last thing that I want to show you, and this is, I've got to give a hat tip to Ben Black, who is a viewer of this channel. Um, he showed me a quick trick. Now, I must point out that I don't actually use the data parsing system because a lot of the tasks that I'm actually putting in involve uh, 
things like rearrange appointment on Tuesday with or rearrange, rearrange appointment with Jim on Monday. This what would happen with the parsing is that it would identify Monday as a date and then it would allow then it would need me to click and sometimes I'm moving too fast and I forget to click and blah. So I just turned off the date parsing. But by doing that it means now I have to I've had to manually uh, add in the task. So I had to click on project but if you look here there's no search box. So I have to go all the way down looking for my various projects, which is not useful. Um, but Ben uh, gave me a tip here, which is to click on option three. So Alt or option three, and it brings up the <clears throat> thing. And then I can do, I can type in student, um, for example, student affairs. Or in this case, um, I can type in uh, single, because that will be a single action. I can add in there. <clears throat> I can then type in my um, thing, which would type in at, which would be internet, oops, computer, because I would order that on computer, bang, done, gone. So all you have to do with that is click on option or alt three in the actual thing. So, uh, so I can click on alt option three and start typing and it will bring up my project. Really, really useful little quick keyboard shortcut trick for you there. And that's really all I wanted. I did mention about the project calendar feed. For those of you who missed that one, uh, all you need to do, I should just give you an update on that. Um, the project calendar feed, if you've got like I have here, let's go into my work projects, for example. And in my work project, I've got one, two, three, four, five projects in here. Uh, if I actually use the project calendar feed for work only then it is not going to pick up the other sub projects like to do his book uh, productivity online course and so on it's not going to pick those up i have to actually individually add those projects so uh, this is very useful if you're specifically like i in my case i really need to get the book finished and i will hopefully get that finished by the end of this month so i can do some editing so this is a really keen project. So I can add that to my project calendar, uh, to my calendar, so give me a reminder every day. So just an update on the project calendar feed. If you've got, like, I have sub-projects here, then just keep in mind that if you create the project calendar feed from the parent project, it's not going to pick up the sub-project or the child projects, if you like. So just keep that in mind. You need to add in each individual project that you want in your calendar feed. Okay, well, that's enough for today. Uh, in this episode, I hope you found some of these updates useful. Don't forget to get to the update log window. You just go into your gear icon up at the top here. Click on that and click on the version. Like I've got here version 846. Click on that and it will take you to uh, the ch to do is to change log and you can have a quick look down and have a look and see what option or what's been updated and what's been fixed. Okay, hope you found that useful. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, episode 90. Uh, and now I just wish you all a very, very productive week.